Hey guys, my name is San Kazoa and I welcome you to the third episode of my How to Build a Redstone ALU tutorial. In the second episode we started the actual building process with this main memory cell right here. After that we added the main output and main input bus and the invert logic operation. In this episode we're going to talk about our two internal memory cells, one of which I've got right here and the second one is just an exact replica of this thing. So I will explain that one and if you guys understand how that one works it should be very easy to add the second one. And if you now think to yourself, wait a second, an ALU does not have internal memory cells. Well that one does and that's for two reasons. Mm, the main reason and the first reason being um, we are building a standalone ALU right here and we don't want to need to simulate any inputs from registers or stuff like that but we want to have an actual standalone thing and for that we kind of need internal memory cells and the second reason is if we turn this ALU into an actual redstone computer afterwards we want to have a simple circuit and using internal memory cells for the ALU makes the circuit for the computer a lot easier. The major downside of using internal memory cells uh, for the ALU of a real computer or an actual computer is though that simple arithmetic operations like an addition or something like that will take multiple ticks. So that's a ma major downside but I kind of going for the simple circuit not the fast circuit with this tutorial, but you guys should be able to figure out the how to do the non-memory cell ALU as well using the parts I explained in this tutorial. Anyway, this episode we're going to talk about the memory cell right here. And the one I've got right here is basically just an exact replica of this thing right there. It uses the same flip-flops with the same reset line and the same input torches and you guys can see the input from this memory cell is the output from our main memory cell and the output from this memory cell is connected to the input from our main memory cell so the output from this memory cell is connected to the input from that one and you guys can see that this is not a clock which it should be because it's just rooting around because those torches down here actually prevent those redstone lamps right here from sending out any signals and we've got the same thing going on down there so even though there's a signal coming in right here there's no signal going out through these torches because they are all inverted by those torches down there if, however, we turn those torches off now, this will uh, change the value of our internal memory cell to the value of this memory cell right here, because this button right here connects to the reset line, so this button just resets the memory cell to all zeros, and after that a signal is routed through, and every torch um, which has a 1 in this memory cell We'll just blink once and change the state of this thing right here. So let me just quickly program a random value into that memory cell. And if I press this button down here, you guys can see the value change to the actual value of the main memory cell we've got down there. So to the output of this thing, the output just does a little turnaround right here and routes to those torches right here which connect to the main input line. And we've got the same thing going on right here. So there's no signal routed through these torches and that's because of this thing down there. Also we've got this torch right here inverting th this torch. This torch is just connected to the reset line of this memory cell. So if we press this button down here, the exact same thing will happen like with the other memory cell and I will quickly show this to you. We've got a random value in our main memory cell right there and we press, th press this button, memory cell resets and receives change impulses from 
all of those torches right here through these lines I just explained. And this basically gives us two new ALU operations, the operation copy from, uh, copy to one, which will copy the value from the main uh, memory cell into our memory cell one, and the operation copy from one, which will copy the value from our memory cell one to our main memory cell. After that we want to add a second memory cell and have copy to um, two and copy from two. And yeah, that's basically it for the memory handling part. One important mistake I want to point out, if you do those turnaround things right here, don't get messed up. So if you start out with the circuit like that and you copy it into that cell and from that cell you copy it back in, uh, into the main memory cell, you want this bit to still be here. You don't want the um, input to flip or something like that and that's a mistake you can very easily make so be, av be aware of that, be aware of which bit in this memory cell translates to which line and which line needs to go where. So that's it for the memory handling part of the ALU. I will add the second uh, memory cell in between the uh, two episodes and the next episode I will do will be about the adder and probably the AND gate, I'm not sure about that right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a comment, rate or subscribe and I will see you guys in the next episode.